Currently, Jerusalem is a city under siege and not for the first time. From stories in the Bible to UN resolutions, this is a city forged in conflict. For many, this is a deja vu moment. It reminds them of the deadly Gaza war last year. And this is exactly how the conflict started. Israeli raids in parts of the West Bank, violence in the Al-Aqsa compound, and simmering tensions in the holy city. All of these led to the all-out war that battered the Gaza Strip. And today, fresh clashes broke out again at the Al-Aqsa compound. Palestinian worshippers clash with Israeli forces. At the center of the Israel-Palestine conflict is Al-Aqsa, which is Islam's third holiest site. It is a silver dome mosque inside the 35-acre compound and this complex is referred to as Al-Haram Al-Sharif or the Noble Sanctuary by Muslims. But the location is also considered to be holy in Judaism. For Jews, it is known by the name of Temple Mount. Jews believe that this compound is where the biblical Jewish temples once stood. For decades, it has been a major flashpoint, the most contested territory in the Israel-Palestine conflict. Currently, Jordan acts as the custodian of Al-Aqsa. This was agreed upon by both Israel and, and Jordan in a peace treaty and they decided that the WAQF or the Islamic Trust would have control over matters inside this compound. On the other hand, Israel would control the external security. Non-Muslims would be allowed onto the site during visiting hours, but they would not be allowed to pray there. The Arab world has accused Israel of violating the status quo. It says Israel restricted the rights of Palestinians to worship while allowing far-right Jews to enter the sacred site under police protection. Jordan's King Abdullah even warned that Israeli moves were a threat to peace in the region. On the other hand, Israel has lashed out at Jordan's comments, accusing Amman of breaking, of rather backing those who resort to violence. Relations between Israel and Jordan have deteriorated rapidly following the violent clashes at the Al-Aqsa compound. Meanwhile, in Tel Aviv, a political storm is brewing over the latest violence. A key coalition partner is threatening to quit the government. The part in question is the Islamist Ram Party or the United Arab List. It is an Arab political party led by M.K. Mansour Abbas. In the 2021 elections, this party won four seats in the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, with the fragmented political landscape at that time. These seats gave the party the role of kingmaker. And now the party has frozen its membership. It says it is under pressure from its supporters to denounce the Naftali Bennett government. This is not the first time that clashes have broken out here. And given the endless cycle of violence, it won't be the last. Tensions are rising in Jerusalem. Attacks and counter-attacks continue in Gaza. The conditions are ripe for an explosion. But all residents want is peace in the holy month of Ramzan. However, this escalation, this time around, is eerily similar and many fear that another war is just days away. For more perspective, we are now being joined by Mir Javed Anfar, live from Tel Aviv. He is a West Asia analyst and co-author of The Nuclear Sphinx of Tehran. Mir, thanks so much for joining us. Now, we've seen a rise in tensions between Israel and Palestine. So what led to this recent flare-up in violence? Uh, well, um, it turns out that there were there have been uh, during the holy month of Ramadan, uh, the Palestinians, as you quite rightly said, <coughs> are um, uh, have access to to uh, Al Aqsa Mosque as arranged between Israel and the Waqf um, and the Waqf authorities. However, a very tiny minority before these uh, these prayers. Um, have been throwing stones at Israeli security forces and have been, you see the stones they throw not only can damage uh, Israeli security forces, but right on the other side, beneath the uh, Haram al-Sharif, between the Al-Aqsa Mosque, that area is the Wailing Wall. And it, those stones, if they throw them far enough, they could actually land on people's heads right. on the bottom. So these have led to, um, to tensions and uh, the Israeli police were forced to uh, to uh, go in there to quell and to arrest the uh, the troublemakers, and then afterwards, somewhere between 50 to 80 thousand Muslims, uh, peaceful Muslims, uh, they went in and 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 they prayed, which was uh, which was great. Right, me now. Whenever we talk of Israel and Palestine, one asks, who broke the status quo? So this time around, is Israel guilty of breaking the status quo? 
no, it's not us. Uh, we've made many mistakes in the past, um, but this time it's not us. This time it's a. You see, the Hamas is feeling. Hamas wants to overtake P, the PLO in the competition for hearts and minds of Palestinians in East Jerusalem and uh, in uh, in uh, West Bank. And Hamas's message is jihad and constant war against Israel. So by by provoking such confrontations, Hamas wants to make itself look as the genuine defender of Palestinians. And it thrives on, on conflict with Israel, as we've seen. Hamas has been a failure in terms of providing economic solutions to Palestinians, but uh, it's a jihad, so it's jihadist message is one of the few things that he has left. So um, the, the provocateurs are on the Palestinian side and, uh, and, and Hamas mainly is responsible. Of course, and I'm not saying we in the past have not made these big mistakes, we have, but this time I'm blaming the provocateurs on Hamas and some Palestinians. Right. Uh, Me, just a final question there as we wrap up our discussion. What's the way forward to de-escalate tensions? Um, first of all, to tell the truth that unfortunately at war, some, sometimes fake news and disinformation is being spread by, by some parties, in this case Hamas. The state of Israel does not uh, want to change the status quo in, in the, in the uh, uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque. It is the same as it was before. Our Muslim cousins, our Muslim brothers, our Muslim neighbors, our Palestinian friends can go and can go and pray there as before. But when there are some people who come in and throw stones and set up fireworks uh, and throw fireworks from within the mosque at Israeli forces, then that has to be stopped. This is the short term answer. The long term answer, of course, is is a peaceful is a political solution. But that's just so far away that it's not worth your viewers that I spend my time speculating because right now that's not that's not near what we can do is to contain to contain the conflict given how deep rooted this conflict is Mir, uh, do you see any kind of scope of international mediation that may help uh, douse tensions to a certain extent look at the end of the day we can come to New Delhi we can go to Washington we can go to Oslo but at the end of the day you know it's up between us and the Palestinians to, to, to resolve. Well, on the one hand, we have some Israelis who don't want to see a Palestinian state. Some of them, like we have a party in Israel that has six or seven uh, seats that is just basically racist. While the majority of Israelis are worried that if there's a Palestinian state, like before, every time we gave land back, more Israelis were killed, so they are, they're apprehensive about moving towards peace. And on the Palestinian side, there's a side which is Hamas, which is basically almost half of Palestinian politics, that basically doesn't even think we have a we as Jews have a right to exist in this land. We should be all driven out. So when you're in such a deadlock, there is no prospect for 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 real peaceful talks, even with foreign intervention. But as I said, what we could do is to shrink the uh, the shrink the conflict by allowing more Palestinians to come and work in Israel from the West Bank and from Gaza, therefore making at least economically life easier for our Palestinian neighbors. Right, absolutely. Mir, thank you so much for your insights and thanks for joining us thank on you. Beyond at This Hour. focus in beyond fine print at this hour is of course Jerusalem which is a city under siege and this is not of course happening for the first time as we've been reporting from stories in the Bible to UN resolution this is a city that has been forged in conflict and let's tell you about the cause of the conflict this time around Israeli raids in parts of West Bank violence in the Al-Aqsa compound and simmering tensions in the holy city all of this has now led to an escalation in tensions and at the center of this conflict, as we've been reporting, is the Al-Aqsa compound, which is Islam's third holiest site. It is a silver dome mosque inside the 35-acre compound. The location is also considered to be holy in Judaism, but for Jews, it is known by the name of Temple Mount. Jews believe that this compound where the biblical Jewish temples once stood 
And for decades, it has been, of course, a major flashpoint, the most contested territory in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's important to note that currently <laughs> Jordan acts as the custodian of the Al-Aqsa compound. Let's tell you what has happened today. Earlier today, in fact, a new Israeli raid was reported at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which left several Palestinians injured. That's what news reports say. Israeli forces reportedly entered the mosque compound in occupied East Jerusalem and injured approximately 30 Palestinians. This is what news reports are saying at this point. The fresh raid took place on Friday morning with Palestinians throwing stones at the Israeli police who were dressed in full riot gear and then entered the compound firing rubber bullets and stun grenades. All this according to the media present at the scene. A small fire was also reported in the compound with Palestinians blaming the Israeli police for setting a tree alight while the police said that the fire was a result of Palestinians throwing fireworks. The Palestinian a Red Crescent put the number of Palestinians injured at 31, including 14, who were taken to the hospital for treatment. The Israeli police said that one police officer had been injured after being hit by a stone. Now, as we promised, we will try and get you both sides of the story. And now for more perspective, joining us on the show from Palestine is Akram Natshe. He's a journalist who is live with us on this broadcast from Hebron. Akram, thanks so much for joining us. Now, reports are saying that Israeli forces entered the Al-Aqsa compound, the mosque compound in occupied East Jerusalem and injured approximately 30 Palestinians, including three journalists. What can you tell us about the same? Yes, uh, the, 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 the escalating of situation is continuous. Now, after the ending of the uh, Al Jumu'ah, uh, praying uh, Israeli uh, Israeli police uh, storming in uh, the Al Aqsa compound again, and they start to uh, uh, to launch tear gas against the prayer by drones this time, and this is, this is the first time that. Uh, uh, Israeli occupation police uh, uses the, uh, this kind of uh, weapon, let's say, uh, against uh, the prayer, uh, uh, red, uh, Palestinian red Hasidians, that there are more than uh, 50 Palestinian prayer were uh, injured by, uh, by tear gas. Now, the situation is under tension in uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque as a result of the uh, uh, the, the continuous storming in by uh, settlers, by uh, Israeli uh, uh, police for the uh, Al-Aqsa compound and the uh, prayers and the uh, uh, Palestinians try to uh, yeah, uh, defend themselves and defend the uh, Al-Aqsa mosque inside the uh, Al-Aqsa and that reflects uh, uh, for all the situation in whole Palestine and uh, I think it's extended now today in other, in other Arab capitals, in other Arab cities, in Jordan, in Egypt. We saw this uh, uh, demonstrations. So we, we don't speak about little things. We speak about Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is uh, uh, in, it, it, it's as, as a column in the uh, Islamic heritage and the Islamic uh, religious and uh, Arabic uh, Arab uh, culture. So. Uh, I think it's uh, not affect only the Palestinian cause and Palestinian people, it's affect all uh, Arabs and Muslims around the world. Right. Uh, I just want to cut through uh, the different uh, perspectives and accounts that are coming, of course, from both warring sides. My question to you is, what according to you is the way forward in this conflict? How can the ongoing tensions be resolved with any kind of international mediation? Will that help in your perspective? Yeah, the, the, the solving and resolve this uh, uh, conflict is by the international power, which is USA and EU and uh, uh, and other uh, players, and to pressure Israel to end the occupation. The main problem is the occupation. Israel is try to create day by day. They are try to create a, a new situation in Al Aqsa and Al Quds in West Bank and uh, uh, continue continue and. Uh, their siege against Gaza. So uh, the situation is, let's, let's say, it's, it's miserable in, uh, in Palestine, occupation and violation, violating uh, human rights, and uh, and there is no horizon for 
and hope for a political uh, resolution or, a, or a, any other kind of resolution from uh, any side. Palestinian can, couldn't defend themselves by uh, only by uh, civilians or by uh, uh, popular resistance, and uh, Israeli don't want to make any kind of, unit of, of negotiation uh, before today's uh, been against the uh, minister of uh, army in uh, in Israeli government says. We don't want to give Israel, uh, Palestinian, and instead we just will give them uh, some kind of a structure that without army and we we have to uh, control the security uh, in the area. So uh, that the view of the uh, Israeli uh, side who don't want any kind of uh, uh, resolution for uh, the, for what's happening now. Right, Akram, thank you so much for giving us your side of the story. Thanks for joining us on Beyond World is One.